this video I wanted to show how I've been using the oscillator reversal indicator that I got recently. I wanted to share how I've been incorporating it into my regular trading routine. This one I've been kind of just using more in the background. I really like to trade mainly off of time-based charts, but I like the signals that I get off of tick-based charts and range charts and volume charts. So I can show you how I use the alert function that's built into most of Ninza's indicators. It's definitely helpful if you've just got one chart to trade on or you've got some space concerns. So I've added four instances of the oscillator reversal. Each one is tracking something different. Uh, this first one is tracking a MACD. Second one is a RSI. Third one is a stochastics. And the last one is a CCI. And you can see for the markers, I've changed the name to whatever oscillator it is. So it'll print the oscillators on the chart. But that way I can see multiple different oscillators on one chart, see when I might be getting a potential reversal signal. And you can apply this oscillator reversal indicator to any oscillator. It also prints the oscillator down below and shows you oversold and overbought conditions and it has these highlighted colored ranges that you can totally change the color of all this and the color of the signals and what they say or if you just want symbols for the markers you could do that too. You can also change the threshold for the center and the high and the low. So this center line here and then where it would start printing this shaded area. So this is the settings I have for the MACD on this particular time frame and instrument. Uh, threshold center of zero, that's the center line, and then 10 for the high and negative 10 for the low. And I came up with all these different settings just by printing it on the chart, and then if I have too many signals, I will make this range bigger, and if I have too little signals, I'll make the range smaller. And I just kind of find what setting works best for each different time frame. It'll also vary between instruments. If you trade something slower like the ES, you might not get as many signals using the same settings that I use for the NQ charts. So you definitely want to fine tune these settings depending on what time frame or what chart type and also what instrument you trade, whether it's a faster moving instrument or a slower moving instrument. But I really like the settings that it's generating on this tick chart here. I've got the pop-up enabled right here. So every time I get one of these signals, it'll pop up with a little window that alerts me to that, no matter what chart I'm looking at. So I can trade on my main chart, but I can have this running in the background, and I'll get an alert anytime one of these signals is printed. I've squashed down all the other oscillators besides the MACD. Then I also have a 50 range chart. I've just got one oscillator on here right now. It's for a CCI. And the settings I've got are 0 for the center, 60 for the high, and negative 60 for the low. I've also got the alerts enabled. I changed the color to gold, just so I can tell the difference between the alerts when they pop up on my chart. And then I've got my main chart that I'm trading from. On this chart, I have a support and resistance radar indicator loaded that's printing these support and resistance lines, and a Super Trend Pro, which is printing these red and green stop lines and the candle color and giving me these super trend signals as well. And then I've got an oscillator reversal. This one's set to an RSI with the standard 50 for the center line, 30 for the low, and 70 for the high. But you can see when we're entering into oversold here, the oscillator turns red and gives you a heads up. That was a nice little pre-market move. It was right near the support and resistance radar line and we're coming up out of the oversold zone. Could have taken a nice trade there up to this next support and resistance line. You can see that even though we're in a downtrend on the super trend, we start getting these hollow candles printing, which means the trend's weakening. I'll often take counter trend trades when I get the hollow candles. So I've got some market replay data loaded for September 26th. I can show you how I'd trade the system with the alerts. See, I've got these charts running in the background. 
the 377 tick and the 50 range. And then this is my main chart that I trade off of. And I've got my five minute longer term chart over here. It's just got a super trend and an intraday adaptive support and resistance indicator. Uh, you can see in the pre-market we had a bullish super trend print on the five minute. And we had a nice pullback right to the center line on the intraday adaptive support and resistance. And we took off over a hundred point move in the NASDAQ right there. We had a super trend. We had a super trend turn bearish right before the market opened, but we're coming up right to these support and resistance radar lines. A lot of resistance right there. So I would have definitely waited till it broke through these lines before I got into a short. And as you can see, it bounced right off this support and resistance radar line. And then we got into a super trend long in the same direction as the trend of the five minute. And we had a nice move up to this next support and resistance line and it kept going. So we've had a really nice move up. We're pulling back close to this support and resistance radar line. Uh, we've got our super trend stop here. I often trade right off of these levels too. And another support and resistance radar line right below that. Definitely more interested in longs as the trend is definitely up right now. So we had a nice bounce right off of that support and resistance radar line. Up you know, over 40 points. Our super trend started printing strong green bullish candles. So I just got a bearish reversal signal on the 377 tick chart. Two of them. I can click over and look real quick. Stochastic and an RSI. Uh, we are coming up at whole number. We've got this support and resistance radar line up here. Price is moving higher. RSI is a little bit lower. So there's a little bit of divergence. I'd go ahead and get into that trade. I'd move my stop above the support and resistance radar line. And I'd be targeting the support and resistance radar line down here. Now I've mentioned before that I'm not a big fan of set take profit and stop loss levels. I, I like to put my take profit and stop loss just wherever they need to be above or below the most recent support and resistance or the most recent highs and lows. But you can see I've got this chart up that I'm trading off of and I've got my five minute chart as well. So having another chart with a bunch of oscillator indicators might be a little bit confusing but having it run in the background and just giving me pop-ups when the condition is met that's really helpful then I can click the tab over and see what's going on really quick and then come back to my main trading chart so I'm able to absorb a lot more information right, that was a nice trade We just got two bullish reversal signals. I do like taking trades right off the super trend stop line. I know we did get a print downward. Uh, we've got a lot more resistance right here. If you just look at price action, price is stalled out in that range. We've got the huge uptrend this morning. We're still in a bullish trend. And we just got a hollow candle print on the super trend. There's not really enough room to warrant that trade. Uh, it might be good for a little scalp. But you'll see these super trend stop lines often really hold. I like to see price break these super trend stop lines by more than just a couple ticks. Like over here, you see price broke above pretty far above this line and that's when we had the trend continue it even pulled back right to the stop area before it took off uh, this time you know the candle barely crossed over so all kinds of little nuances that you'll notice once you get more experience trading each indicator and 
how it moves on the particular market and time frame that you trade. But you can see that bounce trade worked out really nicely. And we had that help from the 377 tick chart alerts. We get a super trend print long. What I'm noticing here is we're getting some pretty major divergence in the RSI. The price has been moving higher. The RSI is moving lower. We are in a strong uptrend. I wouldn't be surprised if this made it back up to this next support and resistance radar line up here. But right now I'm keeping my eyes open for a short with all this divergence going on. All right, there's one bearish reversal signal. We have a stochastic. Same thing over here. Price has been moving higher all morning, but our MACD oscillator is still lower. So we're coming up to this support and resistance line. Uh, we're still getting strong green bullish candles on our super trend. So I just want to give it a little bit of room to breathe. See how far it might want to go up. I try to have as many factors as possible working in my favor before I take a trade. You can see over here on our support and resistance radar histogram, we have some pretty big resistance right up here too, around 50 and 64. All right, we've got another bearish reversal signal on the 377 tick chart. We've got an RSI diver. Uh, or RS, we got an RSI reversal. And we have a hollow candle print on our Super Trend Pro indicator. So the trend might be weakening now. I'm go ahead and get into a short trade. I'm gonna have to move my stop above this area on the histogram, support and resistance radar histogram. That's a pretty big stop. So I'm looking to target down here near this support and resistance radar line. You can see there's also a lot of range right here in the price action. Also right below it too. So probably get a reaction around one of these two areas. But I've gotten two bearish reversal signals on my tick chart. I'm seeing divergence on both charts. I've got a bearish reversal signal on the 50 range now. So that's three bearish signals. I'm going to go ahead and move my stop down to right above these highs here now that we're in some profit. See, we've lost the support and resistance radar line there, so I'm going to go ahead and move my take profit right to this super trend stop line. These lines are dynamic, so they change throughout the day depending on which lines are being hit the most. So when we lost that support and resistance radar line, I wanted to play it safe, and I moved the take profit right up to this super trend stop line, which now is being broken. Um, we got a super trend printing short. Our IRSI is still moving downwards. I wouldn't be surprised if price came down and touched this other major support and resistance line down here. But it's after 10.30. I'm usually done trading for the day right around then. So, But if you're patient and wait for these great trade setups when you have multiple confirmation multiple multiple reversal signals on the oscillator reversal indicator and using these support and resistance lines and some kind of trend indicator it could be really anything you could use that alert function for any of ninza's indicators that offer that feature which i believe is most of them at this point pretty much all the ones that i own have some kind of alert feature on them 
you could have different things running in the background on different time frames or Rinko charts or tick charts, volume charts, range charts, and then just trade off the main chart or two or three that you like to trade. But it's been a super helpful way for me to check on many different time frames at once while remaining focused on the time frame that I like to trade. And on a side note, this might be the last video that I make for a while. I've done a review for a great deal of the indicators that I use on a regular basis already. So if there's any other Ninza customers that have had great success using their indicators and you want to make some videos for them, you can get some free indicators as a trade. And it would just be great to see some more people sharing how they use the Ninza indicators. I think it'd be beneficial for the Ninza community at large. So definitely reach out to Ninza if that's something that interests you. And I hope that the videos that I've made have helped a few people understand how these work a little bit better and maybe given you some ideas on possible trade setups and ways that you can customize these to use in your own personal system.